Welcome to the Monday, May 21st, 2018 meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Please be advised that this meeting is being made available through a live video and audio broadcast on Government Access Channel 15. First thing on our agenda tonight is a 7 o'clock appointment with Linda Osborne of the Town Memorial Committee in regards to the Memorial Day activities. Excuse me, point of order. Oh, sorry, yes. Start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Memorial Day is coming up a week from today, and we will have our parade starting at 10 a.m. at Arrow, marching down Center Street to the Town Memorial Park in front of First Church. If it rains, we'll have a ceremony in the church. Uh, we have a trolley. The trolley's been donated by Rockstar Limo, and um, that will be at First Church at 9.15. Pick up veterans and anyone who needs a ride down there, the selectmen, people who are marching. And um, if you need to ride on the trolley, that will welcome you there. Uh, we have the police, fire department, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, and a cheerleading group for my uh, high school band, which you know is fabulous. So uh, that's our plan. We'll be going to the schools on Wednesday. We go to uh, Prideville at 9, we go to Hobbamock at 10, and we go to North at quarter of 2 for their ceremonies. And then uh, we rotate among the churches in town, so this year we'll be attending 10 o'clock Mass at St. Douglas. And then we'll be here at uh, about 9 o'clock, 9.15 on more Day to get things started. So we have a tradition here at the uh, Selectman's meeting that the veterans and kids reads the governor's proclamation. So, Rob and Renee Herman is going to read the governor's proclamation. The proclamation, whereas, while the nation was still recovering from the horrors of the Civil War, people in cities and towns across the country gathered to honor those Union and Confederate soldiers who had given their lives, celebrating the first Decoration Day and Whereas, after World War I, the nation came together again to honor those who had fallen in the service of their country, renamed Memorial Day. The last Monday in May is when people remember and honor the memory of all the men and women who fought and died in all American wars and conflicts. And, whereas, throughout our country's history, thousands of Massachusetts citizens have fought in wars and conflicts to defend our safety and way of life. And whereas their legacy of patriotism and dedication to country is an inspiration to all Americans, and whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who gave their lives, so that their sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim May 28, 2018, to be Memorial Day. Thank you. Thank you very much, and we'll hopefully see you all on Monday. Mr. Furlong, you agreed to say a few words. Yes. Very good. All right, we'll see you then. See you then. Appreciate, good night. Good appreciate all the hard work that you do. Put this together. Comes from the heart, believe me. We have a great committee. Yep. Thanks. Thank, Thank you for coming you. in. All right, next up at 7.05, we have John Nolet with an application for a mobile food vendor permit from Dairy Twist. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Um, I'm John Nolet, the owner of Dairy Twist, and we would like to get a permit for a mobile trailer to do parties, different things like that. He's my son Michael, who will be mostly doing the, um, the truck and stuff. So it'll be mostly be private. It will be primarily private events, um, which will be invited to property to do like um, graduation parties or fundraisers and stuff of that sort. So. Mm -hmm. 
All right, any questions from the board? No, I just, I, I, I think. just, do you want to go first? Or? Oh, I'm, I just thought I really liked your ice cream. It's really great. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I probably put on a few pounds from uh, stopping yeah. by there and uh, and eating it. So it, it's been a it's very very nice, clean establishment. Thank well, you. well run. Thanks. Yeah, I have a bias as a customer as well. But um, we had several years ago given permission to a um, kind of a trailer setup, uh, and the guy hung around the uh, herring run for. You know, I set up tables and use our electricity and that kind of thing. You're not planning on that. We have no plans on doing that. We not at all. Yeah. That's not strictly parties, um, and we'll bring our own generator or hook into the person's house with their permission, but primarily we'll use our everything ourselves. Yeah, we would not be setting up anywhere, you know, different places like that. Okay, we trust it. Yeah. Uh, how is this trailer or you know going to be stored after the fact? I mean, you have your property there on Washington Street. Right. Uh, is it going to be stored there when not used, or when I said when the, the year is done, where is it going, and is it going to be? It will be on the side of the house. Okay. Um, most likely with a cover over it. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like a good project, uh, and I'm sure the mobile ice cream is as good as you stand, so I, I wish you success. Thank you very much. Thank Mr. You. Chairman, if there's no further questions, I would move to the approval of the application for the mobile food vendor permit for Dairy Twist under the name of John Nolette. Second. All righty, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I vote aye as well, so it passes unanimously. Thank you for coming in. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right, it is now 7.08. Uh, we are meeting with the IT committee, so if you would like to go early, you can come up. If not, we can move on. Hey. <laughs> 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 okay, I, I forgot you were here. Of course I was. Kathy Salmon, Sheila Landy of the IT Committee. Um, just very briefly tonight, we went through um, the RFP process for IT services for fiscal 19. Uh, we currently have an outside vendor, but wanted to make sure we were um, looking at all of the possibilities uh, for the town. So we advertised properly. We worked with Ed on this. We put it out on combis um, and then the local paper and website. Uh, we had about 77 inquiries. We actually received 14 bids. We opened them as a committee, again, with Ed um, participating with us. And after having gone through those, uh, we collectively uh, recommend that the FY19 IT support is, again, covered by the existing um, company that we have, which is called HubTech. So we, we would ask for your support on that. You need that in the form of a motion? Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. All right, I would move to authorize the town administrator to enter into one year contract for IT support and services for fiscal year 2019 between the town of Pembroke and HubTech. Second. Alrighty, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Any, aye. any opposed? I vote aye as well, so that passes unanimously. Thank you for coming in. Very good, thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thanks for your work. I know it's uh, above and beyond what you folks do on a day-to-day -day basis, and we appreciate the help. You're very welcome. Thanks, guys. All right, so those are three appointments we had lined up for tonight. So now we'll now move on to the board action items. The first of which being that Selectman Brown has submitted his resignation of his role on the advisory committee effective immediately. I move to accept the resignation of John Brown from the advisory committee term expiring 2018 with regret. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. We got the second. Arthur did. Right. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
I uh, think that leaves two openings now to so it, one vacant and then oh there's three vacant so they're actually looking for uh, three and now they'll be looking for a fourth uh, we'll be looking because uh, Jim McCullum because of health issues will not be asking for another term on the board so yeah we're looking for vacancies yeah. coming up coming up so if anybody wants to go on the uh, advisory committee there's a bunch of openings so and run right up here <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, Bill, you're right. This uh, the advisory committee is a very important committee in town, and it's 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 something that John, if, if you being recently on, maybe you can make a pitch to the public for someone to uh, to join. Uh, well, the biggest thing, one, you don't need a financial background. Uh, we do have financial people that are on the board, but it's a good way to find out what the finances are going on in town, how you're working with other committees, that basically what their budget needs are. And it's really an eye opener of kind of figuring out what town is about, going from the financial side of it at least. And I, I enjoyed my time there. That's why it's with such regret that I'm happy to be on this board. You know, I wanted to be on this board by leaving advisory, but the phenomenal people that really look after our financial needs, uh, working with the board of selectmen or other committees, was just a great experience. So I highly recommend it. We'd also like to commend John for his time serving on the advisory committee. Ed, did we actually take the vote? No. We yes. took the vote? Mm -hmm. So we, it was unanimous, right? Yes. All right, so that passed unanimously. The next board action item is a consideration of the request of the Community Center Task Force Chairman Andrew Sullivan to appoint Kyle Harney of 52 Barker Street to the community task force. Mr. Chairman, move to appoint Kyle Haney, 52 Barker Street, to the community summit task force. I've Second. worked with uh, Kyle in the past um, on, um, on the 300th committee and a couple other things, and uh, he'd be a, he'd be a uh, good guy to serve on that committee. He's a hard worker. So. Certainly a high recommendation. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, I vote aye as well, so that passes unanimously. All right. Does anybody have anything under old business? You might have something on the old business. All right. Maybe the, um, all of the fish that came up and spawned, there's quite a few of them that are leaving, so um, everybody's been looking for the fish and uh, haven't been able to find them, but the uh, there is a couple of places where the ladders and the dams are that, that uh, you can sneak in and take a look. And it's, um, we're going to try to post some more videos on the town website about, um, about the uh, photographs and the videos that we take of them. And we're also going to try to post uh, some videos this um, fall about the juveniles leaving. And um, the other thing I'd like to say is that um, uh, Brockton Water has started their um, construction work on replacing the um, screens over at uh, Diversion Pipe, which is a really important thing to us. And uh, we've been fighting for about five years to get them to do that. And um, I talked to um, head manager that works in Pembroke here, and um, he told me it went up to a $42,000 project. So there's um, they're replacing one screen and then they're going to put another screen in front of that with a with a big huge walkway so that they can go out and, and um, you know shake the screens and remove them and um, and do the, the right maintenance that they need to do to take care of that so the only other thing that we need to do is is um, is look at some of the fish that are even smaller that than that that um, it might be getting down through you know, in the um, in the early part of the uh, migration. So, but everything is coming along good, and it's it's um, it looks real good. I was down there the other day and uh, watching um, you know watching the guys put up all of the stuff and cleaning out some of the brook area down there that was that was pretty trashy, and um, they've agreed to uh, to uh, take down one of the big trees that's down there that's that's kind of hanging that it looks like it's um, 
Um, well, definitely a widow maker. It's going to come down someday, and uh, so they're going to try to take care of that too while we're there. So, um, awesome. We're pretty happy about that. We put in a new screen at um, at Furnace Pond, and um, to stop the adult fish from going up into the bog on Maquan and Medici's Street this year, and. Um, Ocean Works, uh, Mark Amarillo donated that screen to put in there, and we work with Conservation and DPW to, to put that screen in this year, so we stopped any fish from getting up into that area. We also met with, um, with Landers, and they covered up some of their um, uh, drainage piping that um, had the fish would have access to to get into the drainage system. Um, and we recognize that, and uh, they worked with us on, on uh, covering up some of that to take care of anything with a fish going up inside the drainage. So, um, so that worked out very well also. And the guys have been putting a lot of time in and effort to make sure that the fish get up safely and get down safely. Better than three weeks ago, we had 344,000 fish that came up. Um, and we expect to go over what we had last year. And the fish, some of the fish are still coming up. So um, unfortunately, we're, we're now going by the hand count. So we're lucky to have the North Salt River Watershed Association people there donating their time. And there's several of them that come during the day and they count for a certain amount of time to see how many fish come up. And there's a formula that they figured out with the Division of Marine Fisheries that um, that indicates um, they come they come fairly close to the electronic counter, um, so that's good news. So, but I'll bring back uh, the final totals um, later. But um, um, had a really really big good run this year, and uh, so we're all pretty proud of that. So, a lot of the people that saw the fish upstream just couldn't believe how many fish that there were, but. Like I said, we're going to try to post that on the Pembroke website, so <coughs> under uh, under the uh, Pembroke Fisheries, so um, as soon as we can get a chance to get them on there, the people can go on the Town of Pembroke website and look under uh, Pembroke Fisheries, and they should be able to see a lot of different videos and, um, and pictures of, of um, what's being done, so good news. So. That is good news. Thank you for the update on that. Great work. I too have an update or something to discuss in our old business. Ed, have you made any progress looking into if we can ban electronic trucks? You know, after I met, uh, we chatted last week. Um, unfortunately, the last week was a little hectic as we were getting uh, the office ready for the fact that Sabrina was going to be gone for nine days. So, uh, uh, but I'll be happy now that that's kind of settled in and uh, and we in our. Uh, uh, a temp person was out sick Thursday and Friday as well, so it was a little heck at the end of the week. So I'll be happy to hopefully have a report for you for June 4th. All right, thank you. I think that concludes old business. Move on to the town administrator's report. A couple of items, Mr. Chairman. Uh, number one, uh, I think I shared with the board last week that we received notification from. Department of Revenue through the uh, Community Compact Program that the town received the I an IT grant of $119,700, which will go towards the purchase of the computer system, <clears throat> excuse me, that will link uh, the town accountant's office with the business office at the school department. So uh, as you saw from the email, it was very competitive, and there were over 120 communities that apply for these grants so we were fortunate to be able to get be one of the several communities that received that kind of funding um, already chatted with the board beforehand about having uh, John sign the warrants next week and uh, with the uh, holiday week so we'll have that taken care of and speaking of grants <coughs> I've been in conversation with um, uh, Comprehensive Environmental Incorporated the, those are the folks the engineering firm that did a lot of our pond grants that we had when we did the uh, the study of Furnace Pond and Oldham Pond, 
and then they were the ones that prepared the 319 grant that was allowed the construction of 38 catch basins in and around the ponds um, to uh, prevent the uh, runoff from the various uh, roads around the ponds from getting into the ponds. Uh, so anyway, uh, th the reason that I've been in discussion with them is that uh, hopefully they're going to help us prepare another 319 grant, which will supplement the uh, the amount of money that we had uh, appropriated at town meeting for pond cleanup, uh, the uh, aluminum sulfate that goes into uh, uh, Oldham Pond and the copper sulfate that goes into Furnace Pond. Uh, these grants are uh, a 60-40 match. Uh, we've already got obviously the $90,000 appropriated by town meeting. So um, hopefully if we can uh, get this grant, which is due June the 1st, then uh, we will be, you know, we will only have to spend 40% of that 90,000. And then what we'll do is probably save that for the following year. And this would allow us to treat Habermach for the hydrilla, furnace for the uh, uh, algae bloom, and Oldham from the algae bloom as well. And uh, obviously now that there was a little bit of a, a change in the Hanson Board of Selectmen, but I've been in conversation with the Hanson Town Administrator because, as we know, about a quarter of Oldham Pond is in Hanson. And so, you know, we went there to partner with us uh, in uh, helping pay for the, uh, the cleanup of uh, Oldham because that's the most expensive of all the cleanups. Uh, it, it'll range in the fifty to $60,000 range because of the chemical is more expensive than the copper sulfate which is uh, which is allowed in furnace but not allowed in uh, Oldham Pond because of the uh, endangered species that that's in Oldham Pond. All right thank you for that update that's great news about the grant. Uh, Ed while you still had town administrators report could you just give the public uh, a, a quick Route 14 update? Oh uh, I, we were talking earlier and it, it appears that They'll, they've done all the raising of all the manholes from the Hanson line through the roundabout all the way to the stop and shop in the center of town. And they expect, we thought originally that they were going to start paving on Wednesday. And Bill's suggesting that maybe they might even start tomorrow. So, uh, but it, it'll be, the project will be done as far as paving is concerned uh, before the holiday, before the holiday weekend. Oh, that's great Very progress. Yeah, great news. All right, moving on to the ask the selectman portion of the meeting. Does anybody have anything for that tonight? I can add something to that. Uh, we had a couple of uh, long-time uh, volunteers and, and employees that retired this past week. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much to Marian Smith and congratulations. I uh, hope you enjoy your retirement. And also, uh, Ginny Wandell, a longtime school committee member, uh, served the town for many, many years, and I just want to say congratulations to her as well. I think it goes for the rest of the board, too. Yeah. We've uh, worked with the both of them now over the years, and it's, uh, it's been a pleasure, but... That's right. Yeah. Be good. Yes, I think we all feel the same way. Thank you for suggesting that. All right, moving on to new business. Anything under that tonight? I do have one thing uh, for the board and the public's information. Uh, the Town Government Study Committee is going to continue uh, to look for efficiencies in town government. But one of the things that will be uh, foremost on the upcoming agendas uh, will be looking into a town charter. I know there's some folks in town that uh, would really believe that Pembroke would benefit from a town charter. Uh, it's going to take some study before a, a formal town charter committee is established, and that's something that the uh, town government study committee uh, will be working on. And um, I know some folks have, have also asked, well, why do we have so many committees in town? That's how open town meeting form of government works. Volunteers, volunteers that help. We don't have a mayor and a full-time staff. The only way to get things done is by the committee process. So uh, that's where we are, and we are trying to move forward. So just wanted the board and the public to know that. All right. So we're going to move on to the upcoming issues. On June 4th at 7 p.m., there will be a public service announcement from Chief Wall, William Boyle, and Robert DeMarzo. On June 4th as well, 
and 11th and 25th, the, the annual reappointments will take place. On June 11th at 7 p.m., the school committee will be in with a discussion with the selectmen regarding the fiscal year 2020 budget process. And on June 18th, the summer schedule begins. Ed, is there a need for executive session tonight? Um, Mr. Chairman, we're not sure, so I would recommend to the board that we have a brief recess until we hear from uh, Police Chief Wall about whether or not there is a need for executive session. Do we need a vote on that? It's a recess, yeah. I would move with recess for five minutes subject to uh, contacting uh, Chief Wall. Second. All right, there's been a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I vote aye as well, so that passes unanimously. We'll be in a brief recess.